unable to hear you captain sanjay unable to hear you the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen we now rejoice hallelujah for he whom you did merit to bear hallelujah as risen as he said hallelujah pray for us to god hallelujah rejoice and be glad o virgin mary hallelujah for the lord has truly risen hallelujah let us pray O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of Thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant me through the intercession of the Virgin Mary may obtain the joys of everlasting life through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance always remain with us, and may the soul of the faithful departed in the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Sandra, I'll make you the co-host also. Okay, the Captain. Where are you? I can't see you. Where are you? Ah, yeah, there. I'll make Delisa also the co-host. Yeah, so you can mute anybody who is not muted. All right. <clears throat> Today is the Lord's Day. Today is the Lord's Day. Today is a fantastic day. Today is a glorious day. Today is a wonderful day. Today is an exciting day. Today is a fantastic day. Great and glorious things are going to happen today. Wonderful things are going to happen today. The Lord is with me. Today is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in Him. I will rejoice. The Lord is my strength, my stronghold. The Lord is my helper. In Him, I rejoice. In Him, I take delight. My heart exults in the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For He has done great and wonderful things for me. O oh Lord, I love you. I praise you. I thank you and glorify you. O oh Jesus, I love you. I praise you. I thank you. I glorify you. O oh Lord, I love you. I praise you. I thank you. I glorify you. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I magnify you, Jesus. I glorify you, Lord. Alleluia. I lift up your name on high. You are the fantastic Lord. You are the glorious God. You are the magnificent Lord. You are the most awesome Jesus Christ. Before you, every knee will bow. Before you, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. O oh Lord Jesus, there is no other name under heaven or above the earth by which we can be saved except your name, Jesus. Thank you for choosing us to be your Lord in your presence. You are there with us. We have invoked the intercession of Mother Mary, your mother, and she comes along with the Holy Spirit, which you have sent to us. And you, Lord, are with us. You have the, Your word says, O Lord, when two or three are gathered in my name, I am there with you. And whatever you ask for in prayer, if you believe that you have received it, it is already yours. Yes, Lord, we come obeying your commandments, believing that today is a wonderful day. Yes, Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. And he himself has anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He himself has anointed me. I am blessed. I am blessed. My family is blessed. My children are blessed. My grandchildren are blessed. My parents are blessed. My brothers and sisters are blessed. My parishioners are blessed. My neighbors are blessed. All my friends are blessed. All my enemies are blessed. All those who are against me are blessed. Only good things are coming to me. Fantastic things are coming in my life. Only great, glorious people are coming in my life. I love everyone unconditionally. Everyone loves me unconditionally. Everyone cares for me. Everyone is working in my favor because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And I have loved everyone with the love of Jesus. Because Jesus, who is love, resides in me and I love everyone. Yes, Jesus, thank you. 
Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, all my enemies have become my friends. All people are working in my favor. All people are going out of their way to do good for me. All circumstances are working in my favor. All creation is working in, the, in my favor. The sun and the moon, the stars and all the heavenly bodies are working in my favor. All the angels and saints are praying for me. All the martyrs are praying for me. Mama Maria is with me and praying with me. Thank you, Mama Maria. Saint Joseph is with me. Saint Joseph the worker, he is with me. And he is praying for me. He is interceding for me. Saint Anthony is praying for me. Saint Francis Xavier is praying for me. Saint Francis of Assisi is praying for me. Saint Padre Pio is praying for me. Saint John Paul II is praying for me. Saint Augustine is praying for me. Saint Thomas is praying for me. Saint Paul is praying for me. Saint James is praying for me. All the angels and saints. Saint Trees of Calcutta is praying for me. Saint Trees of Avila is praying for me. Saint Trees of Luzo is pray for me, praying for me. Saint Claire is praying for me. All the saints are praying for me. Saint Euphrasia is praying for me. Hallelujah. I am so blessed. My guardian angel is with me and praying for me and helping me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Heavenly Father is with me. He is at my back. He whispers in my ears to go left and right. Oh, I am so blessed. Today is a fantastic day. Today is a glorious day. Today is an awesome day. Today is a supernaturally awesome day. Today is a day when I am lifted up from the human to the divine, from the natural to the supernatural. I am blessed. I am lifted up in the realm of the Holy Spirit, in the realm of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, with a host of angels and saints, are all with me as I am with them. And every good thing comes in my life. I am blessed. My body is being blessed. My body is healed. My mind is healed. My soul is healed. In Jesus, I am completely blessed. By Jesus' wounds, I am completely healed. All my sickness and disease is gone in the name of Jesus. In Jesus, I am perfectly healthy, strong and powerful. In Jesus, all my reports are normal and perfect. Every parameter has changed for the better. All reports give me blessings and they are normal and perfect. Now no red marks on my report. Only green marks are there on my report. Uh, no red marks are there. I am perfectly healthy. All my sickness, all my disease, all my illness, all my pain is gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Is gone. Is completely healed. Most precious blood of Jesus flowing from the cross flows into my body, healing every organ, internal and external, healing every cell and every pore, every part of my being totally and completely. Oh, I am so blessed. I am so gloriously and wonderfully blessed. Alleluia. Alleluia. I receive the peace of Christ. Oh, my mind is so joyful. My soul is so joyful. My soul rejoices. My heart rejoices. I am full of joy. The peace of the Lord is descending upon me right now. The peace of the Lord is descending upon me right now. Peace which only the Lord Jesus can give and this world cannot give. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise you, Jesus. I live a life in abundance. The thief has come to steal. But Jesus says, I have come and I have come to give you life in abundance. Yes, I receive abundance in every area of my life. I am spiritually abundant. I have a powerful life of prayer. I have a powerful mind. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because God is with me who can be against me. In the name of Jesus, I am more than a conqueror. 
because Jesus has loved me and given his life up for me on the cross. Jesus died on the cross for me so that I may be saved. I may be forgiven. I may be redeemed. I may attain to eternal life. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. And through the richness of Jesus, I receive all his richness and his abundance in every area of my life. My life is full of abundance, full of wonderful things. All my relationships are blessed. I live a life of love and joy and peace and harmony in my family, in my surroundings, in my parish, in my neighborhood. I live a wonderful life of peace and harmony. I am merciful to all people. All people are merciful to me. I am gentle and patient and loving and forgiving. And I let go everything. That is why people love me. Because I have the love of Christ in me. And they are receiving Christ through me. The Lord has chosen me to spread the good news to the poor. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and he himself has anointed me to preach the good news of salvation to the poor for recovery of sight to the blind so that the lame may walk, the blind may see, the deaf may hear, the mute may speak. And as I proclaim the coming of the year of the Lord, we are doubly blessed. We are fantastically blessed. All people are blessed. I am blessed. All people. I am blessed. And I am a blessing to all people. I am blessed. I am a blessing to all people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us start the worship song. Deliza, I'll just mute everyone once more. And then you please take over, dear. Go ahead, Deliza. I'll mute myself also.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Amara kala, amara basha, namahu kala, amara badi, amara ba. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Delisa. This is a wonderful song, and I'm sure this will be a great, great, great viral number everywhere, and all people will be blessed with it. All the people during this Pentecost are going to be blessed with this wonderful song, uh, brothers and sisters. This is just a preview of the song which our sister Delisa has uh, sung just now and uh, played just now. And uh, this is going to be released by her on her channel in YouTube and for use in our ministry. And this is a wonderful way she has sung it. She's so blessed and every singing that she does is a blessing to our ministry. Thank you, Delisa, and God bless you. So brothers and sisters, uh, as we are now a part of this retreat, which has been going on from the 2nd of May, and you are already in this retreat. Uh, why do we come for a retreat? Let us try to understand what is the value. The topic of this uh, session, what I have kept is the immeasurable value of retreat. And what happens in a retreat exactly when we come? Why are we coming to a retreat? And what happens to us? And how we can benefit from a retreat is the topic of discussion today. We are all in a retreat. You are in a retreat. One day, every day, you come for one hour and you spend time and it's an ongoing session. You are receiving the word of God. You are receiving the praise and worship. You are receiving affirmations. You are receiving meditation and uh, you are receiving priestly blessings also uh, from Father Zacharias, uh, who is not here today for uh, he's busy with some other work. And I, as his uh, uh, humble helper and deputy, I try to share God's word with you and share the animate this session with you. So bear with me, brothers and sisters. It is very, very important what a retreat does. Basically, a retreat refreshes and revitalizes. It gives an opportunity to us to spend some time in prayer and contemplation and it kindles us and deepens our relationship with God. We come closer to God as we attend any retreat. Any retreat. Maybe a retreat is also, you know, uh, you can spend, uh, you know, a few hours in prayer. You can, uh, and all alone with the Lord. You could even be, you know, how Jesus uh, did was he worked throughout the day in the ministry. He was ministering to people. And in the night he went, you know, up the hill. And there he prayed the whole night and that was his retreat. A night vigil, what we have, you know, we have night vigils and we have uh, so many uh, prayers, uh, prayer groups and so many parishes which organize uh, night vigils. These are all small retreats, but they are retreats. They are a time spent away from the world, a time spent alone with God. Even though we are in a group, you are individually benefiting a lot. So it's a time spent with God. You are spending your time with God, not with the world. And the benefits of that comes. So we can, a retreat has its own benefits. If you see from the, uh, you know, tangible point of view, that it helps us to hear God's call more clearly. It helps us to receive the grace for, you know, getting healing in our life, abundance in our life, providence in our life, peace of mind, as we, you know, did in the affirmation. So the, a number of things happen and we are spiritually renewed. We develop a better relationship with God. Our prayer life improves. Our sacramental life improves. A lot of benefits come through when we are doing this kind of a retreat or any kind of a retreat. You may be in an offline retreat, going to a retreat center, or like you may be in a night vigil, going through the you know, prayer from say about 10 o'clock to morning, 5 o'clock accompanied with a mass and everything. So that also has its similar benefit. So it's all a retreat. So the purpose of the retreat in uh, addition to this, you know, daily spiritual activities is to leave behind temporarily, you know, leave behind the usual distractions. I'm sure people who are here are not distracted and they are focused on listening to the word of God uh, hearing the word of God and understanding what the word of God has to say because the word of God is like a two-edged sword. It cuts through 
you know, bone and marrow, and it actually has a fantastic effect on your heart. Definitely, there are disadvantages of an online retreat like this because you have the freedom to keep your camera off. And when your camera off is off, you would be definitely tempted to do 100 other things. And, you know, distracted by the mobile and distracted. That is why I uh, personally urge and request people to keep their cameras on. I'm so happy that only one sister is there, Sister Indira Fernandez, who's kept her video on. And uh, Sister, uh, you are blessed. You know, you are focused. You are looking at the camera and you cannot do something else because you will be open in, in camera, you see. So that's the thing. But otherwise, what happens, I know I have also sometimes kept my video off in certain sessions. And that is the time I am actually not partaking in that uh, session at all. I am doing something else. You know, my mind is somewhere else. Thoughts are gone somewhere else. So as far as possible, for your benefit, and of course, my benefit also, I also would prefer to see your beautiful, handsome faces and, you know, have a look at you and see you guys smiling. It will make my day. Otherwise, I'm talking to a dead black wall with white names on it. And uh, it doesn't give me too much of joy except the joy of the Lord, which is there. This is what I am called to do, to preach the word of God in season and out of season. And I'm sure video on or video off, you will be blessed for sure, 100%. Praise the Lord. The word of God will heal you, not I. Jesus will heal you, not I. Jesus will bless you, not I. All glory to him. He is the master. He does everything, everything and everything. So in this, you know, we are in, in the world, we are full of, you know, agitation and running around and, you know, either Udar, we are running. This time, quiet time, of prayer, listening to the word of God and meditation definitely helps. Like I said, from the times of Jesus, you know, he used to go up the mountain, he used to leave the house and while it was still dark, he was praying. Early in the morning, he was praying. Through the night, he was praying and uh, people used to look for him but he was spending time with God, with the Father so can he can receive from the Lord and then from the God, his father, and then came out and minister to people and heal him to get the power from God. Because he was, remember, true, truly divine, but he was also truly human. And he was giving us an example how to live as a human being. Because the people were astray. We were all astray in our lives. But Jesus has taught us how to live our life by his own examples in very, very few time, you know, uh, years, three years, he taught us. That is what is documented and that's all we know. The rest of it, of course, the Holy Spirit reveals to us everything and we get the blessings from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, what is the basic purpose of a retreat? The basic purpose of a retreat, and I was taught this by... Uh, one of the priests, when I went for my first retreat, uh, that was Father uh, Matthew Elavankal, who is the, currently the director of uh, Tabor Ashram in Kalyan. And he was also the director in 1996 when I went for my first retreat. And he was the director. He was a young priest. Now, of course, he is uh, uh, grayed a bit. And he, those of you who know, he has uh, come back as a director to Tabor Ashram. So he was the director at that time, a young priest was leading the retreats over there and I had gone for my first retreat over there. He had called me. I was an absolute uh, novice and uh, absolutely fresh. I did not know anything about Jesus. And he, the first sentence that he said, the first sentence that he said was, what is a retreat? Retreat is when you come to a retreat, what happens is you are transformed from what you are to what God wants you to be. So in this retreat also, the same thing is going to happen to you. You are going to be transformed from what you are to what God wants you to be. That is the purpose of a retreat. Hallelujah. So I will just show you a small diagram. If I, I'll try, I can show that to you. Okay, can you see my screen? 
Sandra? Uh, Sister Indira, can you see my screen? Can you do a thumbs up if you can see my screen? Yeah, I can see. We can see. Thank you. Fantastic. Okay. So this shows, you know, the first one where my pointer is. Okay. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Bless you. This shows that we were created and formed in the image and likeness of God. We were created and formed in the image and likeness of God. Then what happened because of sin, because of sin of the world and the sin of Adam and Eve, we were deformed. This is our deformed state. The second uh, picture that the arrow shows, you know, from the top, when you see the arrow, the second arrow coming down in the center. Uh, can you see my cursor also? Can you see the cursor putting it on the deformed? Yes, we can see. Okay, thank you. So you are deformed. Now we met Jesus. We met Jesus and we are reformed. We are getting reformed. Okay, we were deformed. And then Jesus came into our life and we are reformed. We are reformation is taking. We are giving up our sinful life. We are coming and seeking repentance. And now our sins are forgiven. Our sins are forgiven. We are reformed. We are becoming a new creation in Christ Jesus. And we were deformed. We are becoming a, a new creation. And we you know all our sins are forgiven. So we are getting reformed. Our reformation is happening. After we are getting reformed, simultaneously, we are transformed. And this is a transformation that is happening today to you. The transformation is going to happen. How we are transformed? The word of God tells us, Romans 12, 2 tells us that do not be conformed to the patterns of the world. Because when we were here deformed, we were conformed to the patterns of the world. The word of God says, do not be conformed to the patterns of the world, but be ye transformed. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And in this retreat, your mind is being renewed. All the old kachara is being removed and your mind is getting renewed, reformed, rewired, rejuvenated. The old is gone. The new has come. The old kachara is being thrown out. The negative feelings, the negative thoughts, the negative ideas, the negative uh, behaviors, the negative thoughts, words, actions, all is going and new things are happening. So you are being transformed. Being transformed into what? You are being conformed again to his likeness. Romans chapter 8, 20, you are now conformed again to his likeness. In, and you are coming back to that created and formed in the image and likeness of God. So this whole cycle happens because of Jesus Christ. Okay, this happens with, the, with Jesus Christ. What I will do is I'll share this with Sandra and she can put it on the group also. Uh, Sandra, you can put it on the group. I will share this with you later after the session. And you can do that. Okay. So that's what happens. Okay, brothers and sisters. So that's what I explained to you. Uh, we need to be transformed. Now, how will you be transformed? While you are going through this retreat, how the transformation happens in your life? First thing first is you need to receive Jesus in your life. You need to accept Jesus in your life and as your Lord and Master. When I was uh, not knowing Jesus Christ, and many of you and most of you know that I come from a Hindu background. I was not knowing Jesus Christ at all. And when I came, you know, I was suffering and going through a lot of nonsense and hell in my life and really, really suffering in every area of my life. I was suffering and I received Jesus. Somebody gave Jesus to me. He had chosen me. So I accepted him. I said, yes, Lord. Okay. If you can really do something for me, please do it. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I am a sinner. I have really, really done bad in my life. And uh, I don't want to do it again. I want to be a good man. I want to be a good boy. And I want to come back to you. Lord, forgive me my sins and give me the strength not to sin again. Because I am very weak. I will go back to my kachra. I will go back to my sinful. I'm like a pig. Pig, you know, goes back to all that kachra only. In the gutter only he'll go. And in the swamp he will dump himself. So we are like pigs. We give up our sin. Again, we want to go in that kachra sin. So only the Lord can help us. The Spirit of the Lord can help us with that anointing. We, When we maintain and retain that anointing, it can 
help us. The Holy Spirit can help us. We will come to that later, how that happens. But by receiving Jesus, we can be transformed. So that is the first step. The second thing what happens is, uh, we will refer to the first joyful mystery, that is the Annunciation. Sometimes you may think, how this transformation is going to happen? Yes, it's it's uh, the whole world is around here. Yeah? It's not happening to them. How it will happen to me? How it will happen to me? When I believe in Jesus, what will happen? What will happen? Luke chapter 1, verses 35 to 46. You can read it uh, in your this thing. I'll just relate the narrative to you. And it is this. That Holy Spirit came to Angel Gabriel. Uh, sorry, the Angel Gabriel came to Mother Mary and told her, Hello, uh, nice little girl. You have found favor with God. And now you are going to be with child. You are going to bear a child in your womb. And Mother Mary was shocked like, Are what's wrong with you? I am not even married. I am a virgin. I am a single, young, 16-year-old girl. What are you telling me this? Where will I go? 2000 years back, even now, if your daughter gets uh, uh, pregnant and comes home, you know, you will create hell and throw her out of the house and tell her, what have you done, man? Come on. This is not permitted. So even now, it's a scandal. Imagine 2000 plus years back, what was it? So she was, uh, Angel Gabriel saying, no, no, you have to wear. She says, how this will happen? And when she asked how this will happen, the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. When Mother Mary heard this, that it is a calling from God and her, she will conceive by the power of the Holy Spirit. She will conceive by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. She immediately, because she was a prayerful girl, she immediately understood the will of God and she gave her fiat. Here I am, behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. The moment she said yes, the angel departed from her. And this is what is happening to you in this retreat too. The Holy Spirit will come upon each one of you who is sitting here, is participating in this retreat. My dear sister in Indira Fernandez, uh, Hansika, Sister Kiran, Sister uh, Vila Gracia, Sandra Fernandez, my dear uh, anointed sister, Mary Zakaria, Eusebia, Lillian, Sunita, Daf. Every one of you, each one of you, I'm not calling out everyone, but each one of you, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High God will overshadow you completely and you shall be with child Jesus in your soul. You will receive the power of God. You will receive Jesus in yourself. And that Jesus who is conceived in yourself now, that Jesus will slowly, 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 slowly grow. He will grow and he will increase and you will decrease. He will increase and you will decrease. Wonderful transformation. Jesus comes in you, is conceived in you, in spirit. And as he grows, you decrease, as he increases, you decrease, and it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. That's what St. Paul says. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And that is what we have said, that we should be walking, talking Jesus Christ. Our things, everything in us should change. Now, how this happens with the Holy Spirit is the next step to understand. Okay. By the power of the Holy Spirit, everything happens. And when the Holy Spirit, when you believe in Jesus Christ, stepwise, let us go. When you believe in Jesus Christ, see, you've been baptized. Uh, some I have been baptized as an adult, but you people have been baptized at birth. Most of you, I believe, some of them may be there who are baptized later in their life, but most of you are baptized at birth. But that is the time you, yes, also, we all received the Holy Spirit at baptism. But 
the enkindling, the anointing, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, as it is called, the BHS, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, happens once you actually believe and, you know, re-believe rather, and believe with all your heart and accept him as your Lord and Savior. And you give your life to him that, yes, Lord, from today, I am going to be living as per your commandments and your precepts and what the word of God tells me and what the teachings of the church, the magisterium is teaching me. I will do that. And I will live a holy sacramental life. I will go away from sin. I will live a holy life as guided by your word, by the church and by the promptings of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure uh, this much is clear to you guys. So, uh, yes. So we receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That is what exactly is going to happen to you in this online retreat. By the proclamation of the word of God, by the name of Jesus, by the power of Jesus, by the prayers of the priest and the uh, preachers and the team members who are praying for you. There are people more than you are in this session. There are more people praying for you. You will be surprised and shocked. There are so many people praying for you that you may receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit in a very powerful way and great, glorious, wonderful things may happen in your life. Okay, so that's the prayers going on. So you will receive for sure because the prayers are there. So in this retreat, you will receive the Holy Spirit. Now, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior and we give a life to him, we accept him and we say, yes, Lord, now change me, transform me. But next, this transformation starts how it starts. The first thing that happens to you is you receive the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You receive the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure all of you know what are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I will not go into explaining the fruits of the Holy Spirit. But the fruits of the Holy Spirit as given in the word of God are very clear. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, compassion and mercy, humility, self-control, joyful suffering, forgiving love. All these things come into your life. All these fruits come into your life and slowly you realize that you are getting changed, you know. I realized when I received the Holy Spirit, I was such a khadus kind of a guy, such a wild animal, and I had started becoming tame. I becoming like a pet. I started becoming like a pet animal. You know, I started becoming a little mellow, a little quieter, patient, loving, kind, merciful, not just, you know, fighting with everyone on the road. Gadi mein, if I'm driving, somebody driving rashly, I'll go and hit him, get out, give him or in my home, if somebody, my wife herself, she says something wrong, I will, you know, we will have a blast fight and shouting match and hammering one another. She used to hammer me, I used to hammer her. This is my story. That's what used to happen. We used to create hell and uh, nonsense in our lives. But slowly I realized, oh my God, what am I doing? I need to be more patient. I need to be more merciful, kind to people. I need to be humble, not just be a, you know, a bragging guy, you know, a boorish kind of a, a character. I, me, myself, and I am this and I am that. That's what people are, no? You've seen in the world. You are in the world. We are all in the world, but we are not of the world, brothers and sisters. Jesus says very clearly, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. So in this world, we have seen all these things. And we also have partaken in that where we say, I, me, myself, I did this, you know, I worked hard and I got my willpower and I got this and I got that. And we are boring, you know, boasting and bragging and boasting and bragging. But suddenly we realize, no, 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 no. It's the Lord who is doing good things to me and I'm getting everything because of his favor. Because by his grace, through faith, I am saved. Not by my own works. That's the word of God. By Grace through faith, I am saved not by my own works or my smartness or my shana giri. Okay, I am not a shana that the Lord has saved me because of my shana patti. Okay, I am not a shana. Shana is only He. But I am a Buddha who receives the Holy Spirit, the power from God and my life transforms. Now when we receive the fruits of the Holy Spirit, what happens is we start you know, our nature becomes like Jesus Christ. Our nature. How Jesus was, he was patient with people. Even they brought a woman in adultery to her. He was kind. He just forgave the sin. 
he worked out in such a way that she went you know and since forgiven told her non don't sin again and she, nicely didn't stone her didn't permit the you know jewish law to take over but he had as god and as man he gave his own prudence and wisdom and patience because he had love in his heart he had love in his heart he was joyful he was peaceful and our whole nature changes we become different we develop the nature of christ that is the first transformation that happens by the fruits of the holy spirit our nature is transformed into the nature of jesus christ hallelujah so as we continue our walk with the lord we receive the isaian gifts the gifts of the holy spirit the sanctification gifts or the isaian gifts of the holy spirit or the gifts of the messiah is what we receive and we receive wisdom and understanding counsel and fortitude and courage uh, knowledge and piety and the fear of the lord now what happens is here our whole inner self starts changing the wisdom that we receive the understanding the counsel and the knowledge that we receive actually makes us understand god more we understand god we understand the sacraments we may not be able to explain not many can explain the sacrament nobody can explain how you know the uh, bread and wine are changed into the body and blood of jesus christ it is by faith we know it's a mystery and we know it in our hearts and in our soul but if you ask me to explain to you how that is happening explain to me scientifically i cannot do it my brothers and sisters but i know in my heart of hearts and my soul of souls and in my spirit the lord gave me that wisdom that same wisdom the divine wisdom the divine knowledge the divine understanding which the lord jesus christ the savior had and that same thing has come into me and i am now able to understand the deeper mysteries of the word of god the deeper mysteries of the sacraments and my whole character is being changed my whole character is transformed into the character of jesus christ my whole demeanor people see me they are in awe of me because they find that this is a holy character why he is a holy character why he is a pious character because he is with the lord and the spirit of the lord has bestowed upon him the sanctification gifts the isaian gifts of wisdom and understanding counsel and fortitude knowledge and piety and the fear of the lord if somebody asks you a question and there's a dispute you by that divine wisdom and understanding you are able to answer and unravel and give the right answer very very nicely without hurting people and uh, without condemning people you are always merciful and gentle meek and humble and gentle of heart so your character starts changing you no are no longer that wild kind of a character who has got no brains of understanding anything he comes for mass and uh, you know he comes and he stands here there okay yaar come on give me the communion and i'm rushing off he takes communion in rush but with wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the lord when he comes for mass or she comes for mass comes with deep reverence with deep obeisance he comes with his knees bowed with his head bowed in front of the tabernacle he enters the church well in time for mass he comes and reflects he has read the word of god in advance the readings of the day he has read in advance and he has come prepared and he absorbs and listens to every word of the mass he sings along with the choir he is partaking he is actually celebrating con celebrating the mass along the priest with the priest and that is what we are called to do not just hear mass that is the word people have been using no i heard mass and came you're not supposed to hear mass and come you're supposed to celebrate con celebrate the mass you're sub going there to worship the lord and that is what strikes you when the spirit of the lord comes and gives you these isaian gifts your character is getting transformed you are not 
that normal ordinary character you were you are being changed from the humanity to the divinity of christ from the unnatural and the natural you are becoming supernatural like i said in the beginning the plane is shifting up from the worldly plane you are going up to that heavenly plane now you are changing your character is changed so the holy spirit has firstly transformed your nature then your character hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord next what happens is as you believe and as you receive the power anointing of the holy spirit and you receive then a pentecostal experience you receive a pentecostal experience whereby you receive the fire of the holy spirit coming upon you the power of the holy spirit the tongues of fire and then you start boldly proclaiming the word of god you are sent by the lord you are now sent by the lord and now you go evangelizing and proclaiming the gospel testifying to what the lord has done for you and people look at you and they want to know why this has happened and they come to accept jesus as their lord and savior too you are an instrument of salvation for so many souls in this world because now you are being sent by receiving the charisms of the holy spirit now the lord empowers you the charisms are not for your personal use the charisms are for the edification of the body of christ for other people for the good of people for the healing of people for the benefit of the church for the edification of the church for the uplifting of the people benefit of the people healing of the people so this please understand the charisms come what are the charisms just enumerating them uh, from 1 corinthians chapter 12 verses 8 to 10 the charisms are the word of wisdom the word of knowledge gift of faith gift of miracles gift of healing uh, gift of deliverance and discernment visions dreams prophecy tongues interpretation of tongues these when you receive these charisms and you are going and proclaiming the word of god what the lord tells us in the gospel of saint mark uh, chapter 16 verses 16 17 18 19 20 that go proclaim the gospel and all those who believe will they will have they will show the signs when they lay hands on people they will be healed when they drink deadly poison nothing will happen to them serpents will not help them they will be delivering people out of the from satan so all these signs and wonders miracles and healings will happen and this the later on the word of god says and as the west, uh, disciples went about preaching the word of god the lord accompanied them he was with them and here he said i will go away and the spirit of the lord will be with you and the spirit of the lord in these pentecostal times is with us giving us granting us these charisms and we use these charisms for the people and we go about doing the same thing what jesus did when he walked the face of the earth as the lord said you know you are uh no longer you know i don't uh, call you just uh, normal people i call you my friends okay i call you my brothers and you will do the same things that i have done and you will do even greater things than i have done and how will you do it by the power of the holy spirit by receiving of the charisms you will do the same thing you will heal the sick you will pray for uh, people to be delivered you will pray for you know you will be prophesying and you will be seeing visions and dreams as the prophecy of uh, joel chapter 228 says your young men will see visions and dreams and the old men will prophesy so you know these all things happen and we start doing the work of the lord by exercising the gifts uh, these uh, charismatic gifts in our life and doing the work of lord so what happens here is our behavior we start behaving like jesus christ when we go into the society we behave like jesus christ because we are doing the same things what he had done and we are doing even greater things than he had done so we go about healing the sick being merciful praying for people who are not having jobs who are not having problem who are having in hospitals who are having pain who are having marriage problem who are having family problem 
our heart is burdened. So whether you go physically and pray or you go and pray through intercession, the charisms are working through you and these people are healed. People like uh, in our uh, you know ministry, there are people who are great intercessors like Sandra Fernandez over here, Pramila, I don't know whether she is there. These are all great intercessors who the Lord has called and they pray. That is their ministry. When they pray, people are healed. We are all called to intercede and pray for people if nothing else. I may be preaching the word of God, but at the background is always intercession. That is a love for people. So intercession always goes on. We do intercede. We have to intercede for those people whom we are ministering to. Like for all of you, I have to pray that the Lord may touch you, bless you and heal you. Pramila is here. Pramila Yadav is here. A great intercessor. Yes. Pramila, I just saw your name. Kya hota hai na ke is, uh, Bina video ke kiska naam kidar gum jata hai pata nahi chalta hai Pramila ji to ab mein kya kar sakta hoon my dear sister God bless you Sandra you too and all others people so we pray we pray we pray the morning the Lord wakes us up and says pray kisne kya likke diya tha all those who have given us the intention pray for them we have to write down the intentions put it in our mind memory and pray lift them up at the holy Eucharist yes Lord touch these people and heal them all the people I'm going to minister to tonight when I preach the word of God, Lord, touch them. And tomorrow who are going to come in the session, Lord, bless them. Tomorrow morning, mass, they will be lifted up and Lord, bless them with the Holy Spirit. Transform them, heal them, take away all their problems. And as I proclaim the word of God, let there be signs and wonders, miracles and healing. And this is as per the Bible. Okay. So we are doing the same thing. So our behavior is transformed. So our nature got transformed. Our character got transformed. Our behavior got transformed. Hallelujah. So three wonderful things have happened to us. Now what happens is we, as we walk with the Lord and with the magisterium and the teaching of the church, we start imbibing the virtues of the church, of the Catholic church. The virtues come to us. There are two types of virtues. I'm sure all people have gone through catechism in a beautiful way. So we have the cardinal virtues where, you know, uh, we have prudence, justice, fortitude, temperance, uh, you know, the virtues we imbibe. And then we have the theological virtues of, you know, faith, hope and love. By this, what happens is our, we are getting changed more and more in our lives. We are becoming purer. We are becoming holier. We are going, becoming more and more courageous in our life. And uh, because of these virtues, what happens in our life is that the nature was transformed, the character was transformed, the behavior was transformed. Now our nature, character, behavior, our attitude is being transformed. Our you know whole demeanor is being transformed totally and completely. Totally and completely, we are being transformed Nature, character, behavior, attitude and appearance. Everything is being transformed. Also, we start living our life as per the eight Beatitudes. You can read the Beatitudes. We have paucity of time now. Uh, time is running out. Uh, Matt, um, uh, Matthew chapter 5 verses 3 to 10. You can read the eight Beatitudes. You will start living your you know, life as per the Beatitudes. So your whole attitude towards life changes with the virtues your appearance changes. So nature, character, behavior, appearance and attitude, everything changes. You become mini Christ who are, you know, in whom Christ has increased and you have decreased. You are no longer I. I like I say, I am no longer I. Christ lives in me. And I hope I can say that with St. Paul. I have taken the baptismal name of St. Paul, uh, St. Paul's name in my life, Paul. And I'm, I hope that I can live that kind of life where Paul, the Lord lives in me. And I can say with confidence that yes, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So we are transformed in every aspect of our life through the Holy Spirit when we believe and come closer and closer to the Lord and our uh, whole, and you know what happens along this, that a lot of blessings come in. There is persecution also, but the Lord has an answer. He blesses us. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, trust him, you will see the glory of God. That's what he says. If you only believe, you will see the glory of God. If you believe, you will see the dead rise. You will see your dead life, which was having no use. 
my sickness, my disease, my anxiety, my fears, my future, my family, my husband, my wife, my uh, marriage, my, you know, childlessness, my financial problem, everything will be wonderfully, beautifully resolved when you come to the Lord. He will always keep you lifted up, never ever thrown down. You can read all the Psalms, Psalm 91, Psalm 23, how the providence, Psalm 1, how the providence of the Lord works, how he gives so wonderfully. Yes, believe and receive. Believe and receive. Ask, believe and receive. That is very important. So we, when we believe, we receive. And it is not only, see, what is what the word of God tells us is, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All other things will be given to you. So don't run after only material things. First, seek the kingdom of God. Be on the right level with him. All other things will be given. Seek his righteousness, his kingdom. Seek the king, not the kingdom. The king, when you seek the king, the king will or the kingdom is automatically yours. So hold on to Jesus, the name of Jesus. Hold on to his teachings. Hold on to his commandments and precepts. Hold on to the teachings of the church, which is the body of Christ. And your lives will be transformed, my brothers and sisters. Be assured of all our prayers for you. And uh, we see you tomorrow. If you have any doubts on today's topic, please uh, unmute. Raise your hand, unmute, and uh, let me know. We will try to answer you. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Deliza. Go ahead. Any questions? Any doubts? Anyone? Go ahead. We will. We are open. We are all here. If I cannot answer you, I will uh, definitely seek advice from uh, Father Zacharias or maybe anybody else and uh, get you the answer. So ask if you have any doubt, any question. Ask and it will be given to you. Sandra? Good. Thank you, Captain Sanjay. It was a lovely teaching. We hope to hear some more of such kind of a teachings. So, thank you once again. And we will have you for the next 21 days that Father is away. So, Father will return only on the 31st of uh, uh, May. Father will return only on the 31st of May. So, until then, uh, you will be taking the sessions. Uh, please, so, speak you know, Father Sandra, please speak to Father because today he told me that he may be taking the session tomorrow. Okay, okay. Because he told me he will not be available until the 30th, 31st. Just so, I'll continue. speak to him. I'll speak when to him. Gave, when he came online and gave me the rights, uh, this happened. And also tell him that... Uh, YouTube permissions are not there, so I am unable to go live YouTube. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll I'll let him know. Okay, for Captain. Thank you so much. God bless you. Take care. God bless. God bless. Good night.